Hi everyone, in this video we will be studying the chapter number 17, Options of CMT Level 2. Before watching this video, make sure that you have checked the previous chapters and in case you haven't, then I have linked it in the description box below. Also, yes, I know that there has been a significant delay in uploading the chapters and um, you can see that right now I have straight away started with chapter number 17, but that doesn't mean that I won't be covering the other chapters. Uh, I, I won't be able to promise you if I'll be covering the entire syllabus in a particular order, but I will be covering all of the chapters. Okay, so this chapter is going to talk entirely about options and you guys might already know what options are since you've already cleared level 1. So this is going to be kind of easier because you've studied this in the level 1. So we know what are option contracts, right? Basically, they always have an underline. And for example, if we are buying, let's say, Reliance call option or Reliance put option, that means that my underlying asset is the stock itself. If my Reliance industry stock goes up, then my call option contract also goes up and my put option contract goes down. Again, the benefits of both is obviously according to whether you are doing option buying or option selling. We also had discussed in level one that when you're trading options, the favor is always with the sellers because they have a higher probability of winning as compared to the um, option buyers. Okay, so I'm also going to link the option videos options video of level one. So make sure that you watch that because I'm not going to go into that detail. Alright, so options are agreements that give the holder the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a specific amount of the underlying security at a specified price at or until a defined time in the future. If I, must, if I assume and if I feel that the stock price of reliance is going to increase after 8 months, let's say right now it's trading at 1000 rupees and I think that it's going to become 2000 rupees after 6 months, then I can buy a call option of 2000 of after six months after six months let's say it's going to expire and if that actually happens then i can either buy reliance at the agreed price which is a lesser price and that would help me make a profit so it's not basically it's not an obligation that isn't something that you need to do for sure for example let's take a really small example to understand this better if there is a let's say there's a new apartment which is being built this is a new apartment which is get which is um, yet to be fully constructed and let's say there's a guy a and he just looks at this particular apartment and he knows that there's going to be a very big mall which is going to be built over here and he knows that if this mall is going to get built then obviously the price of this apartments or the demand for this apartments is going to naturally increase right and right now it is 2001 he knows that by the time it is 2020 the price of these apartments are going to increase because this mall is going to be built in that case let's say in 2001 he buys a token which signifies that even when the year is 2020 he is going to buy the house for only one lakh for one lakh and to get this token he paid 20,000 rupees now fast forward to 2020 the mall was built and the price of this house is now 10 lakhs in that case the guy a already has the token so he is allowed to buy this house at 1 lakh and that means that he's going to make a profit of 9 lakhs now let's take a case b assume that this mall was shelved and the mall was not built in that case what happens the guy a loses the premium amount which he paid which was just 20,000 and he doesn't get the apartment so it's not a compulsion for him to buy the house it is not an obligation that is basically the whole concept of options options are derivative instruments why do we call them derivative instruments because they derive their value from something which is underlying right so underlying is basically the stock itself 
and options are decaying or wasting assets because all of the things their value will decline over time we've already discussed about the time value and we've already discussed about how the option value keeps decreasing as it goes towards the expiry date all assets depend on some definition of value which is then modified by supply and demand factors options depend on many variables and strike strike prices again if you're still not sure and if you're still not clear with this entire concept that just means that you have not studied the concept of options well in level 1 so make sure that you go and revise it however it shouldn't really be a problem because if you've cleared level 1 that means that you already know futures and options so it shouldn't really be an issue but try to stick with this video and try to understand every concept that i'm teaching and make sure to um, watch this video more than once so that you can understand the entire thing clearly all right so yeah these are the things which we're going to learn what are the benefits of options let's start with that the first thing is leverage if i need to buy 100 reliance stocks then that's going to cost me a lot of amount but if i just buy one call option that's going to cost me less so that is what leverage means ability to gain price exposure to a given amount of assets for a lower initial cost and the second thing is hedging hedging is basically protecting your losses or minimizing minimizing your losses all right for a small premium the option investors has the right to buy or sell an asset at a specific price they will have to pay that full price or deliver the full amount at some time in the future but they can choose to close out their position before that happens they can profit from the move in an underlying asset for a lower cost and lower risk again you need to keep in mind that just because it has a lower cost and just because it has lower risk that really doesn't mean that everybody should do that because 90% of the option traders are loss making traders and this is a very popular and a very um, legitimate study which has been conducted by sebi beginning with call option okay i'll just give you guys a minute pause the video and read these terms and then i'll discuss one by one All right. So call option. A call gives the holder the right, but not the obligation, to buy a defined amount of underlying security at a certain price by a certain date. That's the basic meaning of call option. Call option means that you think that you will buy a security. When do you buy a security? You buy a security if you think that the price of the security is going to go up, and you sell a security if you think that the price of the security will go down. So put option is used when you want to sell a particular stock at a particular date. So put option gives the holder the right, but not the obligation to sell a defined amount of underlying security at a certain price or a certain date. Then we have the strike price. Strike price is the price which you're going to buy. I don't even think I need to explain this either because we've done this. But yeah, strike price is basically that particular price of which you're betting on. If you think that the price of Reliance will go and um, touch two thousand. then you would want to buy the 2000 call option a 2000 strike price call option if the stock trades below 50 the option is out of the money okay 
Now let's look at this. Current market price is 500. We are talking about calls right now. 600. 200. Okay. So the current price is 500. Now 600 has not been achieved yet. Which means this is out of the money. Because it hasn't been achieved yet. That is OTM. Now the price has already traded and it has already reached 500 which means 200 is in the money which means that this particular strike price has already been reached. Now similarly for put options it's going to be the opposite. Okay. Expiration. Every particular option contract, future contract, all of these contracts have a particular expiry. Right. This is the date at which the option holder no longer has the rights to exercise their particular token or the particular contract. Premium is the price which you pay in order to purchase the option. What is open interest? Open interest is basically the number of option contracts outstanding per strike or expiration combination. So the number of option contracts which are open and which are floating in the market that is known as open interest. Exercise is basically using your option right using the rights and you're actually performing the activity for which you initially took the option people usually do not exercise their right because people usually use options for speculation which is why people basically use for example if i buy a call option at four uh, let's say at 40 rupees and i sell it the moment it reaches 50 and make the profit of the 10 rupees so that is what is known as speculation which means that I am solely buying the options contract because I want to make money and I want to keep the balance in my pocket, right? So that is known as speculation. If I actually exercise my right and if I actually buy the particular underlying um, security at a future date, then that is when I am actually exercising the rights which I do have. The next topic is in the money. We know what in the money is. We've just discussed. A call option with a strike price which is below the price of the underlying and a put option with a strike price that is above the price of underlying. These are known as in the money. Out of the money is something which has not happened yet. A call option with a strike price above the price of underlying. A put option with a strike price below the price of underlying. So if a price is below the underlying then that hasn't happened yet in case of a put option which is why it is out of the money at the money now what is atm at the money is the contract or the strike price which is currently happening and where the price is right now if the stock is trading at 400 rupees then my 400 call and put options are at the money contracts so very close or at that particular time implied volatility the calculated expectation of future volatility what do you think the volatility will be in the future what do you think will be the calculated expected volatility in the future options writer writer so whenever you see the term writer just know that writer means seller option seller is a person who is basically selling so that is the person who basically sells the option to the buyer and writing and selling are used interchangeably although selling is to close out a position and it's not called writing right so it means the same thing but the context is different american style european style okay so if you can see the call options it's usually written as let's say reliance 8000 ce ce means call european pe means put european earlier we used to use american options and now we use european options it really doesn't matter but you need to know what they mean right now, what's the difference between both of these options? Let's look at them. American style options may be exercised at any time up to and including the expiration date. Whereas European style can be exercised only at expiration. Now, why did we shift from American options to European options? The reason we shifted to European options is that in European options, you really don't have to exercise it the entire time in fact you're not allowed to exercise your option throughout you can only exercise your option or at the expiration time if you're using european option whereas in the american option you can exercise it before 
the expiry or during the expiry as well so you can keep in mind that american option is more flexible as compared to european option but both of them have their own drawbacks option prices contain both an intrinsic value and a time value the intrinsic value is the value of the option the value the option would have if it were to expire now so the value which the option has always is known as the intrinsic value now intrinsic value is the value which is there inside the option and even if the um, contract was supposed to expire today what value is left in it that is known as my intrinsic value okay so one thing you need to keep in mind that intrinsic value is higher for in the money contracts and intrinsic value is the lowest for out of the money because out of the money contracts do not have any sort of intrinsic value why did i say sometimes because what happens is that sometimes out of the money contracts can become in the money contracts right by the time the expiry date is reached in situations like that they will automatically develop intrinsic value okay time value is the speculative component the longer an option has until it expires the greater the chance that it will move into profitability okay so people are more hopeful when there is a lot of time but as the time to expiry gets nearby the value which is on the basis of time the time value is something which gets more and more affected typically options with the same strike price but expirations further in the date have higher prices than those with nearby expirations if you go on your dmat account and if you check you can see that the contracts which are on nearby months they have a lower price and the contracts which are far away they have like higher prices and the closer to expiration the expiration the faster the time decay so the theta decay or the time decay is something which happens at a much faster rate if the expiry date is nearby using the options market there are many reasons why an investor or trader trades options the main reasons as with other derivatives market is to hedge another position or to speculate on the performance of the underlying security so the first reason why they do that is hedging we know what hedge is hedge is like an insurance policy and it can help to mitigate the risk for a small fee for example a portfolio manager buys a large position in company a stock for its long term price appreciation potential but is worried that the next earnings report will show short term issues so the particular person already knows that the company is good in the long term but the report is going to give some short term losses so in order to protect yourself from that they can hedge their position so they can buy put options because they know that the price is going to fall for in the near future or for a small period of time so that is the meaning of hedging speculation is what i told you where we can capitalize on the moments right so you can also know that um it's very risky so you need to be really well versed with it okay major components of option price uh oh one second yeah major components of option prices option codes include the standard pricing and volume data open interest bid ask size figures and all of these while traders can look at individual options data widely used display called as options chain so option chain involves all of these components listed in a particular chain right so you know what an option chain is it shows price volume open interest all the strike prices all the dates and everything so look at this particular look at this this is aapl which is apple open bid ask open interest net chain last time and last sale so these are the few components which are involved so this is how i'll just show this to you quickly wait how do i turn this around okay anyway you can just pause the video and you can look at it this is how an option chain look like and the option chains basically have the date calls puts and all of those option analysts also look at the option greeks now these are the option greeks and the price of the options depends on the 
Greeks as well. So the first Greek we are going to learn about is known as delta. Now what is delta? Delta basically measures how much an option price changes for a one point move in the underlying. So if my underlying asset or the underlying security changes by one point, then how much change will the options contract show? That is what is measured by delta. The value of delta basically ranges from 0 to 1 for calls and minus 1 to 0 for puts. Quickly revising what we learned about delta. Delta is the option Greek which basically shows us how much the option contract with, will move for one point movement of the underlying. And the value of delta for calls will be from 1 to 0 and minus 1 to 0 for puts. Now let's talk about gamma. Gamma basically talks about the rate of change of delta. Just like what we discussed about delta, now the rate of change of delta is something which is given by gamma. So basically if you find delta and you take a second derivative of delta again, then you basically get gamma. Okay. Values are, okay. Now if in the paper you get a question that delta is the second derivative no dash is the second derivative of price what will be the answer gamma what is the second derivative of price gamma so that is something you need to keep in mind values are highest for add the money options and smallest for those far in and out of the money vega now let's talk about the greek which is called as vega vega measures the risk from changes in implied volatility Higher volatility makes options more expensive since there is a greater chance that the underlying security price will move. Okay. So if the white volatility is more, if there is more vega, that means that the price of the options contract is also more. Theta. Theta is time decay. Theta is something which is going to basically measure the rate of time value decay. And it is always a negative number as time moves only in one direction. Time is maximum during the starting. As the time goes by, it's obviously going to go in negative, right? Next, we have row. Now, row is one option way which you use the least. Row is something which basically um, shows us the impact of the changes in the interest rates. So, these are the option weeks. Delta. Delta talks about how much the option strike uh, options changes as compared to the change in the um, underlying gamma talks about gamma is the second derivative of price and it talks about the rate of change of delta vega talks about volatility theta talks about time decay and rho is again about the interest rates next we have implied volatility i won't get into the detail of this because the next chapter is going to be about iv itself so implied volatility is basically the estimated volatility of the securities price so you are going to estimate a particular volatility amount for it for a future time although not a guarantee but implied volatility tends to increase while the market in the underlying security is bearish so if the security is bearish then my iv increases and when the underlying security is bullish then the iv decreases so if something is falling then we can be scared of it right so which is why the iv increases but if something is flying and if it's some, if something is bullish in nature then you're not scared you're not panicking anymore so the volatility is less so the most important concept in the implied volatility is an estimate of the future volatility or fluctuations of the security price while levels of implied volatility are associated with bullish and bearish markets it really does not predict the market direction so don't just blindly assume that if my iv is um, less than that means that the market is going to be bullish that's not the case we cannot generalize like that right so implied volatility is not the same as historical volatility why because actual volatility or realized volatility is something which has already happened in the past or in the history whereas implied volatility is something that we are talking about the future which has not happened yet okay all right so quickly let's start with option strategies there are many um, strategies which you can use in order to trade options right 
so a trader may believe that the underlying security is about to have a very large move but we don't know whether the big move will be on the upside or the downside if a particular company is going to release its earnings then you know that there's going to be a big move in the stock it's either going to be really up or it's going to be really down now you don't know what it will be in that case how do you take a benefit of it so what will happen is that a long just a second yeah so the person can make a long straddle position what does a straddle mean a straddle means that using a call and put so you can buy a call and a put one of them will become zero and one of them will become double or triple so a long straddle is basically purchasing a call option as well as a put option one option will increase and the other will expire worthless this risk is that underlying does not move okay what is the risk in case the underlying does not give a big move and it stays where it is then you will have to incur a loss combinations of options can create risk and reward profiles and either limit risk and exploit okay next we have the pricing models what is a pricing model there are three common pricing models in use that take into account interest rates the price of the underlying security volatility and the time to expiration this is a complex area of discussion and is left to an options course so there are three models black scholes and the black model cox rubenstein binomial and monte carlo model these are the three models which are the pricing models black scholes and black models cox rubenstein and monte carlo model you don't have to worry because this won't be tested now what are warrants warrants are not options but they are very similar to options they are issued on stocks so you might have heard stock warrant this term what happens is that the right um, the holder is given the right but not the obligation to buy the shares in the underlying company by a certain date so they are basically call options with one major difference whereas call options are written by the public a warrant is only written by the company which is issuing the stock so when an option is basically issued it is issued by the public whereas when a warrant is issued it is only issued by the company which is writing it so the difference between a call option and a warrant is this typically warrants have longer maturities than options so when you talk about which has a longer maturity warrants have a longer maturity when an option is exercised one trader delivers existing shares to another but when a warrant is exercised the company issues new shares which increases the total shares outstanding so that is what is options now what does a technical analyst needs so in order to understand implied volatility he has to use the vix you might have known that there is a vix index which is known as india vix which basically tells us about the volatility we'll decide discuss that in the next chapter so that's it with this chapter i hope you understood the entire options chapter in the next video we'll be starting with the implied volatility chapter